G'day and welcome back to Dark Solar Gaming and our Let's Play series here in Western Australia. Alright, so we are still here working on... Oh, I forgot my field number it is now. It doesn't matter. Oh, don't matter. Anyway, we are just windrowing the header rows that the combines have done on this uh, this field. In fact, let's uh, bring it up and see what field we're on, just to make sure. Uh, field 13, there we go, as I make a mess of our windrowing. Um, yeah, so we are just windrowing the two header rows, or the four header rows, effectively, that the combines did, uh, while they continue to harvest the crop. As you can see, they're just up ahead of us here now, and one of them is actually ready to be unloaded, so we're going to do that shortly. Uh, and then what we are going to do once we have finished um, with, uh, or we're going to finish doing the header row windrow, then we'll offload the combine harvester. Uh, we are then going to go up and have a look and a reveal of the new work area that we're putting into the farm. Now it is not complete. Uh, the stage one is certainly complete. Uh, there's three stages of this. Um, and for now we are going to show stage one uh, we we did buy uh, a couple of things we had to sell some more of our crops so we haven't got much of our crop left in our silos now um, so we really need to get the oats in and put them for sale as well and uh, and get some more money in um, because yeah we really need to get some finances up for this next stage of the farm expansion so um, we're looking forward to this farm expansion. It should be very interesting. Uh, it gives us something else to do. The farm expansion, while I say it's going to be in, in stages, it's probably going to be three or four stages uh, over a period of time, and it's not going to be all very rapidly done. Um, certainly stage two is going to need a lot of money behind us um, to finalise. So um, we'll see how it goes. And it also depends on how much our wages are going to cost for our couple of uh, immigrant helpers we've got coming in to help us very soon. Um, so uh, we might have to put them on uh, some very low wages uh, or just pay for their meals and accommodation, basically. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have to work that out, but uh, time will tell. In the meantime, like I said, we're just going to come around here. We're going to finish off this windrow. And then we're going to head on over to the farm and have a bit of a look. We also need to put away the class uh, tractors and the Pronto Cedars. And uh, the helper that's currently doing our corn planting in field three should be almost complete as well. So we're going to have to pack that up and put that away as well. But anyway, hope this video finds you all well. Um, we are, yeah, we're pretty busy. We're pretty busy. Um, we have uh, been busy here on the field. In real life, we are very busy as well. Um, we uh, just this weekend, just gone. Uh, basically, my son and I both uh, shaved our heads um, in support of the world's greatest shave. It's a uh, fundraising thing, certainly here in Australia. I'm not sure if anyone else in the world does it. I'm sure they probably do. Uh, we're shaving our heads. Um, Raises money for leukemia and the the fight for cures for leukemia and all that sort of stuff so it's a it's a great cause my son uh being only nine years of age so oh, sorry I, I undersell that he's 11 years of age why am i saying nine that's my daughters um and he decided that uh he wanted to raise money for uh, a good cause and that's what he chose and uh, basically I, I said to him and, and all of our friends and that that are on Facebook all that sort of stuff that uh, if he made over a thousand dollars I would uh, shave my head as well in support and uh, he certainly made that goal quite easily. So I'm very proud of him for that and uh, certainly uh, it's a bit cold on my head at the moment but um, it's all right we, uh, we can deal with that. It's for a great cause. So uh, anyway. So it was an interesting weekend in that regard. All right, so we're going to take the class now with the uh, the Hallmaster and we're going to empty off these combines. Uh, we probably will empty both of them, seeing that the other ideal was only at uh, 42,000. Um, so if I empty him, then that's basically a full load in this and it keeps them going for a little bit longer while we go off and explore our 
uh, expansion of the farm. Alright. We're going to cut in across the oats. Like I said before, this isn't a really essential crop for us. It's just purely a money making. Uh, it's just a crop that was in the field when we bought the, uh, the field. Uh, we're not going to be using oats in any way, shape or form. So basically it's just purely a uh, harvest and sell crop. We're not going to be replanting or using any oats at all. So um, yeah, we don't have to worry about uh, wasting a, a little bit of the crop by driving over it. That's just part and parcel of what, what's going to happen. <clears throat> so I hope everyone is doing well, which I said before. Uh, we are... Uh, in summer, heading into um, heading into spring. Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Uh, heading into autumn slash fall. Uh, for those of you uh, that, uh, that locate their seasons that way, um, and it's still been very very hot. So um, the heat hasn't really dissipated that much. So uh, a bit of rain. We've had a bit of rain the last couple of days, which is which is nice. But uh, it certainly has been a very hot summer. And I, for one, I'm looking forward to winter, although I'm, I'm probably betting we won't have a very cold and wet winter. I think it'll be much the same as last year. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, other parts of the world and even parts of Australia aren't quite so lucky. Uh, certainly up north in Queensland, they've had, uh, they've had floods, they've had bushfires, they've got floods again, they've got cyclones now. Um, and I know in the, uh, in, in the United States, they've had some severe weather as well. Um, going in their winter obviously with their snow uh, been some flooding I was watching um, a video by a millennial farmer uh, and I think he was saying some areas of Minnesota and Iowa I could be wrong um, have been having some significant flooding and stuff like that so uh, yeah so there's lots of areas of the world that are having uh, difficulty with weather at the moment and uh, we just hope that everyone stays safe and uh, looks after themselves all right, so we're gonna pull up next to this guy and hopefully we can get him to stop and we'll offload and then uh, we'll go and empty the rest of this off into the semi-trailer and then we'll head on over to the farm. If you haven't checked out Millennial Farmer actually, he's um, he's a, a fantastic uh, YouTuber. He uh, runs his own farm Unfortunately, his choice of equipment isn't quite to my liking. He uh, uses mostly John Deere, uh, but uh, but he is, he is good fun to watch. I've I've had a lot of a lot of fun watching him actually. I, I think he presents very well, uh, and and it's quite a learning experience actually. So um, go check him out. That's the Millennial Farmer. Um, he uh, he does a good job, and I and I certainly am, am enjoying uh, keeping track of his progress. He uh, I, I think primarily is doing soybeans. Um, he used to do corn. I know he was talking about that in his last episode. Um, but pretty much I think he's exclusively doing soybeans now. But um, but yeah, so go check him out, Millennial Farmer. Alright, so he's going to run around here. We're going to offload this into the trucks. And then we'll grab the John Deere. We'll leave the Swadro here on the field. And we'll head on over to the farm and have a look and see what we're doing over there. <clears throat> All right. Flat our pipe. So this will fill up this trailer, and then the next trailer will be about half full after this. So uh, then we'll be taking that load to the farm. Shimmy on up. In fact, it will almost be a perfect halfway load for this trailer. All right, so here we go. He's finished, so we're going to bring him up here. We'll just shut him off. All right, and then we'll go over here. We'll grab the John Deere. I think this is just the 6R that we've got here, isn't it? Yeah, 6R. All right. And we're going to head on into the farm and we'll have a bit of a look and see what stage one development of our farm is. So I wonder if anyone's guessed it. 
it wouldn't have been too hard i would imagine and i haven't released the other the, the previous videos yet so obviously i can't see the comments when i'm actually doing this commentary but um i'm assuming that one or at least one or two have actually gone and had a look at the uh the rewind rewound the video and, and had a look at what we were talking about um and saw what we we're doing in the field I, there was a couple of glimpses there we would have seen uh, but again, it's it's only one small portion of what we're doing. Uh, we have some some grandiose plans for this farm, and uh, yeah, so we'll just see what stage one brings us. Stage two and stage three are uh, are uh, well, they're they're well in development, but they're uh, they're not ready to be showcased at all at the moment. So, uh, but we'll get there. It's a quite a costly thing. We've we've spent a couple of hundred thousand dollars at least, or in fact, I think it's close to a million million dollars already, just on uh, land modifications, uh, development of road fences, all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, hopefully, it should all be worth it. Now we're just going to lower the view down here for a reason, and then we're going to shimmy our way in. All right. So here we go. So this is where we've made the entrance to uh, our farm area. So this is uh, the top end of field one. Whoops, there you go. If you paused it, you can have a look. Um, top end of field one, so we've got a gated entrance here and uh, some nice poplars there which have grown very quickly and efficiently. So let's go in and have a bit of a look and see what we've got in here. And straight away we see some nice big sheds. So for those of you that are aware, you'll already know what those are. Um, they are a unit provided to us by Farmer Andy. And uh, these are just some huge chicken sheds. So yes, we are going to become a poultry farmer. So there we go. There's one through there. So basically it's effectively just a big greenhouse uh, we put our chickens in and they're self-contained, looked after, it's air conditioned, they get a lot of sunlight, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and we don't have to worry about them roaming all over the place, but they are free roaming inside the shed. But they're certainly not a battery shed or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we'll just have a quick look inside. As you can see, we've got multiple sheds here. Um, in fact, if we go out, we'll just zoom out and see what we've got. So we've got, uh, what's, we've got seven sheds there at the moment. So that's what we're going to uh, to work with. Now each of these sheds can support up to 500 chickens. So uh, that's a lot of chickens we're going to have. So here we have it here. This is our this is our chicken shed. So this is where our eggs will be collected and uh, boxed up. We have a buy point here for our chickens, and this is where we put our feed for our chickens here. All right. So it's a nice self-contained unit. And as you can see, we've got multiple units all the way through there. So. That's stage one. So what's stage two and stage three? Well, you'll have to keep on watching to see what we're going to do in stage two and stage three. You'll see there we've got our empty pallets ready to collect our, our egg boxes. But uh, if we go through here in between the, uh, the sheds, you'll see that uh, preparations for stage two and stage three is already well underway. So... Uh, We've plotted the land out ready to go, and uh, it's uh, not too far from occurring, I can tell you. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see how it all works. I'm looking forward to actually bringing this in. It'll change the gameplay here on this map, certainly. Um, but uh, but hopefully it should work all right. Do need to do a little bit more work around here once we've finished fleshing out the layout and what we're doing. Uh, tidy up the roads a bit more. We might actually bring some gravel in and actually make these uh, gravel paths um, just to sort of minimize some of the dirt a bit. And we've actually been considering putting some gravel down on the main farm as well. Um, so uh, we'll have to have a look and see what we go with that. But there you go. So that's what we're doing. That's stage, that's stage one of our redevelopment. So uh, that's our poultry farm. And uh, we'll be getting stuck into that very, very soon. What I should do is turn off this GPS line too. I'm not using GPS, shouldn't I? Let's do that now. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's uh, there. You go. So now you've seen it. 
We haven't got the well. We have got some money there. We could get some chickens at the moment, but uh, we haven't got enough. We're just going to shut the uh, the gate. We don't want people just uh, roaming in there. <clears throat> and there we have it. Now these these gates and fences are available from the in-game mod hub, uh, and they're a great addition, I think, to uh, to the mods. And uh, they place quite well. I mean, there is some. You have to make some adjustments because they're not. Uh, <clears throat> They're not flexible in relation to their placement. Um, don't worry about that. That's just where I've had to flatten the land a bit. Anyway. Um, and my GE skills aren't good enough to go in and make those sort of repairs and modifications. So uh, we're just using placeables. And uh, so far, that's working okay. Uh, we've also done a couple of other slight modifications around the farm. Uh, we've uh, flattened out and, and made a bit better path or roadway uh, around through the silos. We've provide another access here into the field um, so we can easily get in and out of the field instead of going down to the road uh, through here we've just widened our area here because this is where we park our trucks and our trailers um, so it just gives it a little bit more room and we've got a bit more turning space here as well so um, that's a couple of little modifications through there but nothing major and uh, that's pretty much it so stage one there is complete well Pretty much complete. There's a couple other things I want to get done, but uh, it's certainly pretty close to being complete. All right, so we'll jump back in cab without running up to the side and scraping the side out of the John Deere, <clears throat> and we'll head back to the uh, to the field and continue our work. Right, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll head on up. And we'll see how the hired hand is also going with our corn planting. He should uh, be very close to finished. Although, actually, no, he's probably doing the header rows now because we did have him set to do the east-west runs first and then to do the two header rows. So I would imagine he's probably doing his header rows about now. Uh, so we'll, we'll check that out when we get over there, have a bit of a look, and then we'll come back over to the field 13 that we're working on and uh, see what the state of the combines is. Well, they're currently... 27 and 36 percent so they've got a little bit of more time before we have to start unloading those and what we're going to do is we're going to bring as we said in the last episode the loading wagons over here and collect all the straw we're then going to store it up and then once we've uh, got it stored up enough for the road trains we're going to pick it all up and then take it back and just sell it again just purely for profit so this field off to our left is our cotton one of our cotton fields i'm pretty sure we've planted cotton back in here so um, that shouldn't be too far off being ready. And field nine, we have a big cotton field uh, ready to go. And I believe field one, we also planted cotton. So um, yeah. All right, so where is he? Let's see if we can find him. Might be up this northern, northern corner, I think. Yeah, there he is. <clears throat> over towards the uh, the farm there those lovely big poplar trees they really stand out <clears throat> we haven't got a lot of grass on the on, on the farm we have got some so there we go he's uh so he is he's doing the last header row at the moment so he'll be uh, he'll be finished directly so uh as quick as we can say bob's your uncle he'll be uh he'll be finished that field Off he goes through there. So again, on this field here, we've also done the modifications, as we said previously, in relation to the edges of the field, just to sort of make it a little bit easier for course play to define. Um, because we were finding just the uh, the edges of the field <clears throat> creeping outside the field definition. Um, it didn't like the fact that it was unowned land and all that sort of stuff. So um, might not look quite as nice where we've done those modifications, but just as necessity for the practicality of the gameplay, uh, we've done those modifications. All right. Plus the fact that I'm no good at GE, so I haven't bothered looking at that. So we'll go back here. We'll put this back next to the Swadro. So we're ready to continue on with that when we're ready, to, when we need to. And uh, we'll be pretty much good to go.
What we might do is we might actually take the uh, the overloader out and we might offload um, one of the combines and then get that truck delivery done. That's what we might do. We might just get that delivered into the farm and uh, that will be it for this episode today. Don't do too much. We're already at uh, 20 odd minutes. So um, we don't want to commit to anything too big at this point in time. Right, so where's our combines? Let's have a bit of a look. <clears throat> Uh, there's one over there, in the back corner. Oh, they're both over there. All right, so we'll go back around this way. And we'll offload fir first combine of opportunity. We'll then offload that into the truck, like I said, and then we'll go and offload the truck to the silos back at the farm, and then bring the truck back to the field, and that will be probably pretty close to the end for this episode. So... I also did mention in the last episode about the Anderson DLC. Uh, what I am going to do, I've decided that we will actually do this current field as a grass field. Um, just for something a little bit different. We'll, we'll do that. It's not probably really realistic in relation to Western Australia and, and crops and all that sort of stuff. Um, but just for something a little bit different because uh, our active Let's Play, uh, we'll, we'll probably do that just as a bit of a demo and uh and then what we'll do is we'll um also be using that on our subsequent let's play on another map as well because as we've said previously fenton forest is probably going to be on hold just for a little bit all right we can wait for this combine to come around and uh and do his turn and then hopefully we can get to the pipe without going onto the field again onto the actual crop uh, if not, we'll just dash in there and grab it anyway. Right, let's see where he goes. But he's not going to go on that next line because the other combine's coming up through there. In fact, that's... He's probably going to go across. Yeah, he's going to go in there. All right. What we'll do is we'll just shimmy in there really quickly. And uh, we'll offload him. We'll have to damage a bit of the crop again. That's okay. Hopefully we'll get out of the way of this other combine in case he's going to... Well, he should skip. I think he'll skip over the next lot. So we won't have to worry about him too much. But there we go. We're uh, 24,000. We're done. And that will be it. It won't fill the road train up 100%, I don't think. But uh, it will be sufficient for this uh, this episode. And we'll continue on. So... Uh, seeing as we are close to signing off, I would like to remind you all to make sure you go check out the Simulation Gaming Society. It's a group that was formed by Eustace Farmer, Grizzly Bear Sims and myself. Uh, we had a lot of fun over there. Uh, it's a great bunch of lads that are part of the SGS and, uh, and certainly uh, we would like you to come over there and join us and keep track of what's going on and to interact with the three of us. And also, while you're there, don't forget to also go and check out, if you haven't already, Jerry, as in Grizzly Bear Sims, and Eustace Farmer's YouTube channel. Uh, they produce some great content. Uh, for those of you that are aware and want to have your, uh, for instance, the uh, ability to put down a growing grass texture on your maps uh, with 1.3 on the modded maps, uh, Eustace has just recently released a video uh, tutorial showing you how to actually put that into the map as well without having to wait for the map author to do it and then re-release the map so i recommend you go check that out as well and jerry's also doing some great a great series on the fenton forest farm as well so uh so go make sure you check that out always good value to watch all right so we're going to put the pipe out we're going to offload into this then we're going to take the road train out like i said before and uh we'll offload that into the silos um Secondly, don't also forget to come and join me at my Discord channel. 
uh, the link for the Discord channel and also the SGS Discord and for Jerry and uh, Eustace's channel is down below as well in the comments. So come and join me on our Discord as well. Uh, love to have you there. Uh, it is uh, chaotic, is one word for it. Uh, but again, we have a lot of fun there. There's a lot of stirring goes on. Um, but we've got a bu great bunch of guys and girls that are part of the channel, so uh, so come over there and join in the fun. Uh, we also have a multiplayer server. Uh, currently, that's running Fenton Forest. So for those that uh, become patrons of the channel or are just very loyal to the channel and just show by uh, their loyalty and their comments and all that sort of stuff, uh, they'll get an invite to the multiplayer channel uh, server and have some fun with us playing the multiplayer aspect of Farming Simulator 19. All right, so we're going to take this guy in. We're going to offload, and then that will be pretty much it for the episode. <clears throat> be very, very easy to do a uh, three or four hour episode on this map in one go, although you might get a bit sick of hearing me. Um, but certainly, time-wise, it is great fun playing this. I certainly spend a lot of time off-camera just fiddling about, just playing around. So uh, if you haven't already checked it out, go check the map out. It is uh, on the Modding Welt website. Uh, like I said, it is a big map. It's a four times map. So uh, don't be under any, any illusions. It does take a lot of work. Um, and if you're doing it solo play, uh, solo play is a big task if you're not using course play to assist you. Uh, I know some people are doing it. Um, and and kudos to them for, uh, for giving it a run. But... Um, you will enjoy it. It's a, it's a good map. I'm really enjoying this map. So uh, so many thanks again to Deccan Kane for his wonderful work. Uh, and hopefully there should be a bit of an update coming soon and some some bug fixes and stuff like that. But uh, there aren't too many things in the way of bugs anyway. So it's all good. All right, so we're going to offload our oat off the first trailer, offload the second trailer. Our other hired hand has finished sowing the corn now as well, which is just in good timing, which is great. That's another field that we now have to, have to uh, just watch. So we will actually probably also have to fertilize that field now, I think about it. Uh, so in the next episode, we'll probably go off and do some fertilization. Uh, we'll take the hardy Rubicon out and, uh, and fertilize that field. And we'll probably do that manually because uh, it doesn't take too long to... Uh, Fertilize those fields, or that size field with the uh, the Rubicon. So um, that's certainly a task we can do in the next episode. Hopefully, too, if we've sold any of our crop off, we might start collecting some chickens. <clears throat> now, my goal. Uh, uh, speaking of that, uh, I suppose I should talk about that quickly. Uh, the goal is to start out with 200 chickens or 199 chickens and one rooster in each of the chicken uh, sheds. Um, so that will be the goal to start out with. So um, we'll start off with one chicken shed. We'll get that populated with chickens. And then that obviously gives a lot of room for uh, breeding. Uh, and then once we've got all seven uh, chicken uh, sheds populated, then we'll look at supplementing that by buying uh, and more chickens in at 100 chickens per lot um, and bringing them up. But we won't buy any more than having 400 um, and then we'll let them breed. And once we get to 500, then we'll sell off some chickens and, and make some money that way as well. Now, the other thing that does have to come, obviously, as part of that, um, and it's pretty obvious, is we do have to put in a selling point um, to sell the, the eggs. So, uh, that is a part of our expansion plans. Now, whether we put the selling point at the uh, farm is none of that all together, we might actually see about putting that down at the selling area, uh, which keeps it all down in the one area down near Cargill. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We certainly don't need to worry about the selling point as yet until we've got chickens going and all that sort of stuff. So uh, we've got plenty of work to do before then. Anyway, that's it for this episode. We're about to hit the 30 minute mark and we need to be out of here. So thanks very much for watching. If you liked the episode, as usual, press that like button. If you didn't like our phantom disliker, then please press that dislike button. That's okay, we understand. 
And of course, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you can see more of this type of farming fun and merriment and chaos and all that sort of stuff. And if you do press that subscribe button, please also make sure you press that alarm notification icon so you are made aware of when more episodes are available on the channel. All right, this is Duck Sawley, Duck Sawley Gaming, wishing you a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening or night, no matter where you are in the world. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and we'll see you again very, very soon back here on the Western Australian map. See you all later. Bye.